Bonjour. <laughs> that is my United States most wanted picture. Yeah, I was in Las Vegas, Nevada. The night before, I had stolen $160,000 from ATMs. Wake up the next morning, sign on to cartersmarket.com. There's my name, most wanted beside it. There are things in life known as aha moments. This was more of an ah type moment. So I did what any normal person would do. I went to Disney World. Yeah, you laugh, I really went to Disney World. Lasted about six weeks, the Secret Service, they caught me, sent me to prison, where I escaped from prison. Well, I prefer not to think of it as escape. I think of it as the institution could no longer benefit me, so I decided to release myself on my own recognizance. That got me even more time. So, what did I do to get sent to prison? The Secret Service called me the original internet godfather. I built the first organized cybercrime community, Shadow Crew. Shadow Crew was the precursor to today's darknet markets. It laid the foundation for the way organized cybercrime channels still operate today. Now, I didn't begin in cybercrime. No, I began at 10 years old. My mom, she was abusive, negligent. She used to leave me and my younger sister alone for, for days at a time. This one time, she'd been gone a while, we didn't have any food in the house. My sister, Denise, she walks in the house and she's got this, this pack of pork chops with her. And I'm like, where'd you get those? And she was like, I stole them. And I'm like, hmm, show me how you did that. <laughs> so she takes me over and she shows me how she steals food. And I'm like, that's the best idea ever. So we start stealing food, then clothes, and it becomes like this perverted form of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Toys, games, books, music, jewelry, yeah! until mom comes home. And she joins us. <laughs> Turns out mama was already a fraudster. As I got older, I got involved in the types of fraud she was committing. Insurance scams, stolen cars, benefit fraud, forging documents, until finally, in 1996, I committed my first cybercrime. Beanie Babies. Yeah. In the 1990s, these things were the high-priced collectible. This one, Peanut the Royal Blue Elephant, sold for $1,500. $1,500? I'd buy a cheap gray elephant for $8. Take it home, dye it blue. Most of the time it didn't work. They looked like they had the mange when you got through with them. But what I'd do is I'd post a picture of a real one on eBay, and someone who thought I had that one would buy my fake one. And that's where I found out and I learned my first lesson of cybercrime. That lesson is, the perception of reality is more important than reality itself. What you believe to be true determines your feelings and decision-making process. If I can convince you that I have a highly collectible item, you'll send me $1,500 before you learn the truth. If I can convince a government agency financial institution or merchant that I'm you, the chances of them giving me access to your accounts is pretty high. How easy is it for me to become you? I buy your credit card information or bank login for $15. Your social security number and date of birth, $3. From there, I run a background check, pull a credit report, scan social media. Gotcha. That gives me all the answers that I need to any security questions asked. From there, I pick up the phone, call the financial institu institution, Spoof the numbers so customer service sees your number, not my number. The caller ID and the info that I have is enough to convince them that I'm you and give me access to your money. Cyber criminals, not really computer masterminds. A lot of people think you're these hackers who, you know, they wear hoodies, they're in their mom's basement, hunched over a keyboard, <laughs> breaking into any computer system they want to. That's very, very rare. Very few people have that ability. Most of the time, they're just very good social engineers. They know what it takes to manipulate a person and to skew that person's perception of reality. They're friendly, personable, outgoing, just like me. <laughs> cybercrime, not rocket science. For cybercrime to be successful, three things have to take place. You have to be able to gather data, commit the crime, and cash out. All three have to work or the crime fails. The problem, is that a criminal is not good in all three things. A criminal is good in one thing. Sometimes he's good in two things. Very rare that he can do all three. That's why these darknet markets and forums exist. They allow that criminal to network with other criminals who are good in areas which he isn't. 
Cybercrime is not, it's not a solo activity, it's a group effort. It's that networking that changes a small crime into a million dollar crime. This idea of elite hackers and automated attacks, those things are out there, but most of the time, it's just a botnet of humans working together. Tackling cybercrime needs, means that we need to look at more than just our idea of those elites and those automated attacks. We also need to focus and understand those human networks. Last year, 2017, cybercrime cost the global economy over $450 billion. This is no longer a crime that governments can arrest their way out of. It's too big for that. We need to do other things. We need to find other methods to tackle the problem. First and foremost, self-awareness. Every single person online needs to be diligent and take the proper precautions. Use a password manager. Be careful of what you share online. Protect your privacy and data. Truth is, humans are always the problem. Fake news, that happens because people don't verify what they read. There's no patch for human stupidity. Now, there are some tech solutions on the horizon. One of those is digital biometrics. Iris scans, the way someone types, the speed they type, the, the angle they hold their mobile device, that and more is unique to each specific person. Using a biometric approach to fight fraud, to verify identity, means that it doesn't matter if a thief has your personal information or credit card details. If the biometrics don't match, he can't use them. Then we have this thing called the blockchain, Bitcoin. Well, blockchain is more than just cryptocurrency. It can be used for, for a variety of factors. It can be used to verify identity, validate news stories, <laughs> fake news. It can be used to fight fraud. The security that's inherent in blockchain means that it's going to solve, when it gets figured out, it's going to solve a lot of our problems. Me? I spent 30 years breaking the law. 30 years. Today I'm fortunate to be able to do good. I work with a variety of Fortune 500 companies, consumer groups, law enforcement like the FBI. Just launched a podcast at onlinefraudcast.com. I've seen the internet go from being a fad to a cornerstone of daily life. And I've seen cybercrime go from being a small crime to a business to its own economy. Cybercrime used to mean only stealing money. Today, people are realizing that money isn't the most important thing. Cybercrime isn't just about stealing. Cybercrime is about ideology, status, hacking elections, fake news, destroying economies, starting wars, all that and more because people can be, their perception of reality is easily skewed. Today, our lives revolve around technology. Not all of it is good. If we're going to combat this problem, each of us needs to work to, say, to stay safe, secure, and vigilant. Because in a world where perception is more important than reality, information is the only currency of value. Thank you.